Hi, my name is Carlos Ferreira, and I'd like to give you a tutorial on how to install Rational Team Concert plugin into Eclipse so that you can begin taking advantage of Rational and IBM DevOps services. If so, most of you are likely starting with an existing Eclipse uh, version 432 Kepler. You can go to Help, Install New Software, and you can use the URL here. Uh, that you see at the top to install new software. This is the URL for Rational Team Concert version 405. With that, you can uh, add the Rational Team Concert plugin into your existing Eclipse. Most of you, like me, are already starting with perhaps developing on Bluemix to de develop and deploy your cloud based web application or mobile application and you're probably already doing this using your command line and you have your source locally which is what I do I was developing with Eclipse and I had my source locally so what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get that code up to Rational and IBM developer DevOps services so in this case here I've to do that I'm, I'm taking my existing Eclipse that has my code already and I'm installing the Rational Team plugin so I've now installed the Rational Team plugin, and what I want to do now, and I've already created a Rational uh, and IBM DevOps services uh, account. What I want to do now, though, is I want to connect the two. I want to open up the existing uh, perspective for using um, DevOps services. And so you can go to the work items or either Jazz Administration views or perspectives and open them up. I'm going to open up the work items view here. Once I open up the work items view, one of the things you got to do is you got to be invited to the project area, which is where you're storing your code or will be storing your code on DevOps services. And you want to see how it says accept team invitation. You want to accept the team invitation. To get what you need to put there, and you need to go up to your um, DevOps services um, project area and use your IBM or support ID, IBM.com support ID. In this case, I'm using uh, my Carlos Ferrero one. And what this will do is it'll take me into the, the project area I already set up when I joined and earlier. It's an empty project area. Uh, I created an empty project area for, and here's my ID. I actually had a jazz.net ID called Carlos F. And I have an empty uh, the Django project area that I created and you can see here on the right configure Eclipse client is what I if I click on that I can copy that um, invitation and I can go back to my Eclipse client and put that in there once I have that now I'm actually able to now connect to my IBM DevOps services project area that I created now what you're gonna see though is is you're gonna try to use your uh, ID for your IBM.com site and it's going to fail. Uh, and the reason it fails for me is because I actually have a, a jazz.net ID, which is Carlos F. So you want to use Carlos, your jazz.net ID, but you want to use your password for your DevOps services ID, just so uh, you can connect. All right, so now we can go in. We have our connection to our uh, project area on IBM DevOps services. And you can see here the connections to that uh, project area up there and it's currently empty and what I want to do is I want to add my code now my code already exists in my local Eclipse project area I'm, I've developed a Python to Django app locally and I've been deploying it I have PyDev installed uh, and I'm not going to cover that today but what I want to do is go into the project and I want to share that so I go and share the project uh, from my package explorer and I pick the uh, component and stream uh, that I want to deliver this to and I pick the local Eclipse project uh, that has the code and I go ahead and, and share that. So this will now take the code and push it up to IBM DevOps services um, and basically what I've done is a check in. Now, now that I've checked in you can see the icons have changed here. I got a black arrow uh, which means that they're checked in. I now want to uh, further what they call deliver. I want to deliver these changes and uh, push, in essence, uh, deliver them into the IBM Dev DevOps services. So now that I've delivered them, you notice the icon's got a little um, orange-yellow repository symbol, cylinder symbol, 
and I can go up to my project area and I can open it up and I can actually now see the code that I, I just pushed up to my project area inside of IBM DevOps Services. Now that I have my code up there, one of the first things I probably would think I want to do and that you'll probably want to do is you want to, just like you were deploying on your local client or desktop from the command line using the CF push, you're going to want to build and deploy this. Well, uh, because this is Python, there is no build. Um, but one of the things you're going to do is you're going to detect right away that uh, there's a, an error, uh, manifest.yml. And there's also another little error here. It says changes uh, are pending. And so what I want to do is I want to go up and do a couple of things. I want to deliver to stream the code that I just um, delivered up to uh, DevOps services. Uh, but I also want to accept any changes from um, my teammates if I'm collaborating with them using IBM DevOps services, but also files that are project specific files that IBM DevOps services adds to my project. I want to accept those. Um, so once you've done that, once you've accepted those now, you can go ahead and try to deliver, uh, try, try to deploy. Uh, but we, before we do that, we got to fix the error that the other error we had, which is that a manifest file was missing. A manifest file is basically has the commands that it is required to deploy onto um, Bluemix. And so I, this is an example of the first one I tried, and I, I had some errors or problems with it. Uh, I you can't have a blank command and you can't have blank services so I removed those and uh, with the new ones uh, I was able to get it to deploy so I've made changes there the other change I want to do is uh, maybe I want to change the number of threads from three to two for my proc file which would determines how many um, instances will actually be spawned when I deploy so now I gotta again uh, make sure all those changes are are checked in and delivered. It'll actually show me what are the changes. Uh, you know, I've moved it from three to two in terms of the number of workers for this particular file. I go ahead and uh, and deliver those. So now that everything's been delivered, I want to actually uh, go ahead and try to build and deploy again. I click on the right icon for build and deploy. Uh, and you can notice here it actually says that it's pending in terms of um, actually doing the deployment right to Bluemix. This is doing a push under the covers and it's using the manifest YML file. Uh, and then it gives you two URLs. One URL goes to the Bluemix website, which you see here. Uh, and then the other URL here that you can see at the top brings you to the deployed app, which is my Django app that's been deployed. I can navigate back into DevOps services by clicking on the code link there. So this has just given you a real quick synopsis on how you can, and, and tutorial on how you can very quickly take an existing Eclipse environment uh, and, and deploy it uh, onto Bluemix. Um, I now also want to get the changes that I just deployed back to my client. You notice here my client still has workers equals three instead of workers equals two. Uh, so to do that, I just go into my client and I say team and then I say uh, show pending changes. And this shows me any changes that uh, were made either on IBM DevOps services or by my other uh, colleagues so I can go ahead and accept these. Uh, so that's how you would develop and collaborate using IBM DevOps services and deploy to Bluemix. In this case, it was an example Python to Django app. Hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial and demo and uh, look forward to some more. Thanks a lot.